Hello again. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the role of external, of external and internal factors on the movement ecology of long distance migratory raptors. I'm working uh, as a postdoc in the vertebrate zoology research group in the University of Alicante in Spain. And our group is mainly interested in several aspects of uh, vertebrate zoology. But in particular, we are interested in population ecology of birds and mammals, conservation of endangered species, and especially in animal movement. We are um, interested in the analysis of migratory routes of long distance migratory raptors and the, on the use of satellite telemetry to gain insight into the ecological responses by which migratory birds respond to ecological variation in the environment. And finally, uh, to, we, try to, we would like to try to predict how global change might influence animal behavior. We are here, Spain is in, in Europe, not in South America or Central America. <laughs> <laughs> here we, where we are, in Alicante, Spain. And we have uh, some data on several different species, including resident and migratory species. And, and among migratory species, we have data on Egyptian vulture, on short toed eagles, Montagus harriers, Leonora's falcons, booted eagles, and lesser crescents. Among them, I will talk about two species. I will focus this, this talk on, two, on, on the results we have found in, this, in the last years about two, two species, the Egyptian vulture and the Eleonora's falcon. And the Egyptian vulture is a, it's a long-lived species. It's a scavenger, which feeds mainly of uh, dead animals, but also opportunistically on uh, excrement and eggs and so on. So on. It's a long-distance migrant. It breeds in the western, in the Palearctic, in Europe and Asia, and Asia, and winters in the Sahel region of, of Africa. The Sahel region is the, this region uh, just below the, the Sahara Desert. It's an endangered species worldwide. It's, uh, it's decline, declining, and its main trait, threats are electrocution and poisoning. We we have a uh, uh, track. Uh, main, different birds in the, during the several consecutive years. And in, in one case, we have a repeated tracking of one individual up to seven years, seven consecutive years. It was found uh, death in Mauritania uh, last winter. We know um, many aspects of the, of the ecology of the of, uh, vulture species, or many species breeding in Europe, but we are particularly, particularly interested in what happens during migration. Um, within se among several uh, questions, we we were interested in comparing between and within individual variation in migratory routes and timing, and uh, the degree of repeatability or, or flexibility in migratory routes with both within and between individuals and across different years. These are the, the results of the migratory routes of six different uh, Egyptian vultures. Solid lines indicate uh, autumn migratory routes from Spain to, to Africa, and um, dotted lines indicate spring migratory routes of the same individual in different years. In totally, we, ha we have uh, 80, uh, 80, 48 trips, 20, 20, 23 spring and 25 autumn migratory, migratory tracks. And Mm, the, one of the interesting results we found is the uh, Egyptian vultures follow uh, some kind of clockwise mig migration route. Uh, autumn migratory routes are, in general, more es eastern than uh, spring routes. And we find that uh, there, there is a consistent migratory timing at the individual, and the, at the individual, individual level, both in spring and autumn. This means that uh, uh, individual uh, Egyptian vultures um, try to uh, start to depart at the same dates in different years. And the variation between individuals is larger than the variation within individuals. There's uh, some cases in, in which one individual departs as exactly the, in the same date in different years. This is quite interesting, at least for us. And they are high flexible in the, in the routes they follow in different years. And this is, these differences might be explained might be explained by the different meteorological conditions experienced in route, mainly uh, uh, cross winds and, and lateral winds. 
Um, in contrast to the, the general uh, trend in the long distance migratory raptors, in uh, long distance migratory birds in, in this flyway, we found that uh, auto migratory routes were, uh, were faster than spring migra migration routes. Initially, it would, it would be expected to migrate uh, faster in spring to arrive earlier for, uh, to, to, um, to take a, a good place for breeding. But we found that, the, in general, auto migration routes were uh, faster than spring routes. This might be explained by tailwind support that is different in the, in, uh, between these uh, two seasons. But when uh, we, we took into account the, the effect of, uh, of, of um, tailwind support in some models, we found that daily distance is higher in spring than in autumn. It means that uh, Egyptian vultures will try to uh, maximize their daily distance in spring than in autumn. But the, but due to different conditions in both spring and autumn, they, they uh, migrate, migrate faster in autumn than spring. And there is low phenotypic plasticity in timing of migration. Uh, the low phenotypic plasticity in uh, timing of migration uh, would suggest that uh, there is an endogenous, strong endogenous control of, of migratory mig migration timing. We also studied, analyzed the foraging search patterns in both uh, breeding areas and wintering areas. The background would be that the optimal foraging theory predicts that animals will tend to maximize foraging uh, success by optimizing search strategies. And therefore, we, we, we are interested in examining movement patterns at the individual level, and, the, and especially the variations in foraging search patterns during the annual cycle. This is comparing wintering uh, areas and breeding areas. Uh, this is our, some results. Uh, animals uh, would follow, uh, and actually follow, uh, a, a levy strategy, a levy flight, when, when resources are spar sparse and unpredictably uh, distributed. And they follow um, some kind of Brownian uh, movement when resources are abundant and regularly distributed. When we compare the breeding areas and non-breeding areas, this is uh, Europe versus Africa, we found uh, the following result. We found that in wintering areas, uh, Egyptian vultures follow with a, an almost uh, Brownian search strategy. And in breeding areas, in Europe, they follow a complex foraging search pattern. They, some individuals uh, show with a levy, levy motion, and other ones uh, show with uh, oriented movements. This might be explained by different uh, environmental conditions in uh, between Europe and, and Africa. And one of the most interesting results we found is that the same individuals are able to shift between different foraging search patterns in different years in, this, in, this same, in the same areas. Um, foraging search patterns are more flexible during breeding than wintering. And this would mean that not only environmental conditions would explain uh, the, the behavior, the observed behavior. We hypothesize that individual cognitive abilities, the, the, um, some kind of memory effects, uh, could play an important role in their, in their movement, in their uh, behavioral, in the behavior. Other aspect we were interested in was the, the, the size of the home range and the use of the space use. Um, vultures uh, have evolved under a context of unpredictability of food resources. And we were uh, interested in, in answering this question, what's the role of predictable sources of food in shaping special ecology of vultures? Because the, in, in Europe, um, food resources are um, more predictable than in Africa, for example. We have some places where uh, food is available for vultures systematically, and do they, they know it? We suppose they know it because they go there. And to, to test it, we use uh, resource utilization functions to assess the topology of the utilization distribution with using this, this framework. And the results were that um, we found a strong site fidelity across years. And different size and shape of the home range during the different periods of the breeding season. We, we divided the breeding seasons in three different 
periods, pre-laying period, laying period, when they are on the nest, and the uh, pre-migration period, once nestlings have, uh, have flown and they are uh, ready for, for migration. We found that the, the size of the home range, uh, taking into account different measures, kernels, uh, different levels of kernel, is lower during the, the laying, laying period, in comparison with the other periods. And that territories are eccentric. This, this means that uh, vultures, the shape of the, the territories is different. It's not circular as expected, as, in, as initially expected. Um, we, we used several um, variables to, to, to assess the topology of the utilization distribution, including food, pop human population, uh, topographic measures, and land use variables. And we found that the best predictor of use of, uh, at the individual level was the availability of food resources. This, was, this result was highly consistent across years and, with, and within seasonal periods. In conclusion, we, will, we could say that the predictable sources of food, mainly vulture restaurants, tradi traditional places where uh, food is available for, for, for vultures, with, is, are the main determinants of uh, home range shape. And the other species we are working with is the Eleonora's falcon, which is also a long distance migratory species. This is the Eleonora's falcon. It's a, a, a very particular species because it shows uh, delayed breeding, for example, and uh, unlike other uh, European raptors that they breed on, in spring, it breeds in late summer. And it, uh, and it, um, it do, do this because of, um, it adjusts their breeding season to the passage of a uh, lot of thousands and millions of m small migrant passerines in the, in the Mediterranean, just in auto migration. It feeds on insects in the rest of the, of the year, and it's a long distance mi migrant bird because it, it breeds in the, in the small Mediterranean islet and it winters in Madagascar. It's less concern, has no, no problems, conservation problems in general. And we follow with the seven adults, three subadults, and nine juveniles. In relation to migratory behavior, we were interested in analyzing the uh, differences in migratory behavior and routes among seasons, regions, and different populations in Europe, including two kinds of factors, internal factors, which include age, and, and sex, but we have insufficient data for sex, and external factors such as environmental conditions, meteorology, or, or landscape, landscape ca characteristics. These are the, the roots of other birds from, from, from small islands, Balearic Islands, Columbus Islands, and some Croatian colonies in the Mediterranean until Madagascar. These are the routes followed by, by adult birds. And these are the routes followed by juveniles. As you can, as you can see, routes are different. Birds try to overcome. The, the only similarity is be maybe in the, in the Sahara Desert, when uh, animals try to overcome the, the, the Sahara as, as soon as possible. Um, juveniles took longer time than adults in the migration, and the roots are more crooked and more tortuous than, than adult. Particularly, this happens in the, in the Sahel region. This area, once uh, juveniles arrive in this area, they start to, to make uh, crooked flights, maybe trying to, to feed, to recover from the Sahara crossing. Uh, adults do this, but uh, in a shorter time. In relation to uh, spring migratory routes, these are migratory routes of uh, adult birds. They follow a different route than during autumn, more eastern, and they concentrate in this area, in Ethiopia and Somalia. May maybe this is uh, explained by uh, a strong producti productivity here during this period of the year, which not corresponding the, to the autumn migration. They also follow a, 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 also perform a loop migration, such as the Egyptian vulture or the booted eagles or Mortagus <laughs> harrier. 
with more eastern uh, migratory routes in, in, in spring. And you know, when we have a repeated data of the same individu individuals in different years, we, we found a low root repeatability. Um, differences in routes may be explained by seasonal variation in the distribution of traffic resources. We were also interested in the analyzing daily distance and the stopover behavior. We analyzed the differences in daily speed and stopover duration among age classes and regions. Red lines indicate adult birds and yellow lines indicate uh, juvenile birds. This is for the uh, uh, regional speed and this is for uh, stopover duration. As you can see, there are differences among age, cla age classes in relation to age, region, and in this case, age, region, and the interaction between them. In, in both cases, the stopover duration is longer in juveniles than in adults. These differences might be explained by lower foraging and pre-migratory fattening efficiency in juveniles in comparison with adults. This is an uh, effect of experience, maybe. We analyzed also the we also analyzed the the different um, regions they they cross across the migratory routes, particularly the Sahara Desert, the Sahel region, the equatorial region of Africa, and southeastern Africa plains, and the and the Mozambique Mozambique Channel. We compared the travel rates in different regions, Sahara Desert, Sahel. Equator, South African Channel, and we found that during the daytime, we, we found no differences uh, among the four regions. But during the nighttime, nocturnal travel rates were higher in Sahara than in the Sahel region, for example. Mm, the Sahara desert, desert is the most important ecological barrier for these um, long distance migratory species. And when we uh, measured the migratory performance at the uh, at daily scale, considering the time budget, this is the number of segments dedicated to travel or to, to stop along the, the day, the daytime. We found that Eleonora's falcons are able to migrate during daytime and nighttime, they both can, but do they migrate, they concentrate their migration mostly in the central uh, hours of the day but do, they do also migrate during night. This is quite interesting because uh, it means that orientation and navigation mechanisms operate during the whole day, not only in, in one period of the day. And finally, um, we analyzed the migratory performance when Eleonora's falcons uh, cross uh, across the, the Mozambique Channel. This is uh, the, the autumn route. They, they cross from Africa to, to Madagascar in a 400 to 700 kilometers of, of open ocean. And do, they do this in 10 to 16 hours on, of non-stop flight. But interestingly, they do the same, a different route in, in spring. They migrate following this line in uh, 1,500 kilometers of open ocean in 25 hours, approximately, of non-stop uh, flight. Mm, when we compare the same migratory, mm, uh, spring migratory routes between the between in, in different years, we found this, this result. We found that, for example, the same indiv individuals in 2009 followed this this route from northern uh, Madagascar to southern Somalia. In contrast, they followed this route from Madagascar to Tanzania in 2010. When we overlap uh, the migratory route with uh, 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 the map of, uh, of storm, of, of uh, pressure, love, or high pressure in, the, the, in this area, in this day, we found that the location of the low pressure, uh, low pressure areas was different. And this might explain the, the route that do they follow. This, mean that, this means that would mean that the same the individuals the same individual is able to change the migratory route in in 
depending on uh, meteorological conditions. This is that not only uh, ecological barriers like a Sahara Desert or other open uh, other um, barriers could affect the the mig migratory routes, but also the the meteorological barriers. In conclusion, we can say that satellite tracking technology and, and this uh, symposium is a clear example. It's allowing scientists to make a quantum leap in the field of migration ecology, behavior, and conservation biology. And the environment, the environment plays a key role in the movement ecology of long-distance migratory birds. And the long-distance migrants are able to integrate seasonally, special, especially seasonal changing resources on a continental scale. Through the annual cycle, changing their movement patterns in response to internal and external factors such as age, season, meteorological conditions, and landscape, landscape characteristics. These are some of the papers I have cited along the, uh, this uh, talk. You can uh, uh, request them, of course. And in the future, we are interested in uh, analyzing the carryover effects during the annual cycle. I'm particularly interested in the degree of repeatability of migratory behavior. Uh, we need for to, to do this, we need data of the same individuals followed in different years, but the same individuals, and in the effects of uh, global and climate uh, change. We are fully open to collaboration. If you someone wants to use this data for any other uh, analysis, we are fully open to collaborations. Please ask me. And I would like to thank all the different uh, institutions that have supported this, uh, this uh, work. And of course, all the people of my, of my lab, which are working in, in, in this, with this thesis. Thank you very much. If you have any questions. Excuse me for my English. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.